Uh, good afternoon. I'm Mark McCormick, Chair of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, Office of the Kansas Governor. I officially call this meeting of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission on uh, Friday, June 7th, to order by stating Kansas Open Meeting Act guidelines. Due to distance health and safety concerns, members of the public are not in attendance at this meeting. However, full access to this meeting is being provided by a medium of interactive communication. This medium will provide members of the public without cost the ability to listen using teleconferencing as available. The agenda for this meeting has been posted on the Kansas Public Square website and may be requested by emailing the Kansas African American Affairs Commission office at kaaac.ks.gov. Each member of the commission, staff, and guests will state their name and title each time they begin speaking or voting so that individuals can be readily identified by remote listeners. All participants are required to ensure that microphones, telephones, or electronic devices are muted when not speaking so that the ability of remote listeners or observers to hear the meeting is not unnecessarily impeded. A public comment opportunity will be provided at the beginning of each commission meeting following the roll call and chairman's opening remarks. During this meeting, the commission will not recess to a closed executive session pursuant to KSA 7543-19. Each motion, if any, will be clearly stated and restated before the commission and the chairperson will announce the results of the final vote. Commissioners and guests, please note that this meeting is being recorded. Thank you and welcome to the Kansas African American Affairs Commission meeting. Uh, now for our roll call. Um, Commissioner Westbrook. Present. Commissioner Patton. Commissioner Penn. Present. Great. Uh, Commissioner New. Present. Great. Um, I will now uh, ask if we are ready for the approval of our minutes. Um, do I have a motion to accept? Uh, of our minutes from the last meeting? Ms. Commissioner Westbrook, so move. Uh, it's been moved. Do we have a second? Commissioner New, second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Great. Uh, to accept uh, our minutes, please signify by either saying yes or uh, raising your hand. All in yes. favor? Yes. 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 Did we hear from you, uh, Commissioner Westbrook? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Motion carried. Um, I guess we can move now uh, to our new business and the updating of the bylaws. So the floor is yours, uh, Executive Director Newt. Um, okay, so it dawned on me within the last two hours that I should probably email everyone what I'm calling the clean draft, right? The what we have agreed, what we have all voted on till now, so that we can have an idea of what all is there. And Too many screens. I think what I will do is put that clean graph draft on the screen. That way we can, if I can get it sized. Are you sharing your screen or are you putting it in the I'm, chat? I'm going to get ready to share my screen. Right. Oop, Jonathan McCroy is joining. Do you see the clean draft? I do, but it's very small. Okay. 
No, nope. let's see how about that didn't make it bigger, it just made it. Uh, this is Commissioner Penny. Can you email so we can see it too? I emailed it within the last two hours. Okay, so the, the clean draft? Yes. Okay, yes, thank you. I just, I, yeah, within the last two hours, I'm like, you know what? I probably should email them the clean draft. I've, I've emailed you the old draft. I've emailed you, like, you know, when we vote on things, but I've been keeping sort of a running tally of what the clean draft looks like. So, yeah, if you want to check your email. I don't know how to get this to go larger. Oh, wait, here we go. There we go. Did that make it larger? Is that better, Commissioner McCormick? That'll work. Okay. Okay. So this is just to get us an idea of what of where we are now. I think one thing that I would like to bring up as an idea and most assuredly for the point of having discussion. I think probably should come. Let's see, we've got the name, the authority, the mission, the duties, and then what commissioners should do, how meetings are gonna run. And that's 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 as far as everything that we have voted on. I don't know where this should go, and I, I definitely want it to be discussed, but the notion of reporting and the idea of this idea of an annual report, if it is not stipulated in our statute that this commission produces any type of report, it's not. We are under. Chair, so are you under Article 4 and duties? No, what I'm but here's the thing. Remember, we're 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 writing these bylaws from scratch. We can put it anywhere. Gotcha. This is this is what we have voted on. And I kept trying to stress this because I know it's like, well, are we amending? I'm like, we can we can write whatever by we I mean y'all can write whatever you want because we're starting from scratch. It could go under commissioner, it can go under duties. I don't know where I don't know where we need to go, but I do want to raise this idea of a report statutorily there is no mention of an annual report not at all but i know many commissions commissions in general have this notion of annual reporting so i wanted to put that out there as a discussion point for how the commission would do annual reporting or if the commission even wants to have that in if cuz it's not in the bylaws Nowhere in any of our governing documents is there any mention of any report. I know there are members of the general public for whom that is a stumbling point. However, we are not under any obligation to produce anything. We could leave it that way. Or if that's something that the commission would like to do, because then the next thing would be, um, and remember, we often get we often get very trapped on this commission, this executive director, and this governor. We are writing these 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 bylaws for the future, for whoever the next governor is, for whoever the next ED is, and for whoever's what whoever makes up this commission in the future. To to think about those people and what will how, how will these these bylaws impact them? Not so much how are these bylaws going to impact us because we get very caught up in that. So think ahead as to how are these bylaws going to impact them. Okay, I am. I would. I would. I would be interested in the discussion. Um, this is the chair. I'll lead off. Um, that's not a bad idea. Um, we do seem to be in a position where we could ask various agencies uh, to send us summaries of what the last year of work has been like for them, and we could assemble it. Um, but there are, to me, a couple of challenges. One, uh, with this group, it's always about the locus of work. Um, who's going to actually do it? Second, um, if we produce it, um, would it just live on the website or would we have to mail it out to people or could it be posted in a way that it could be downloadable? Um, 
And then I'd wonder about um, tying our hands with a mandate that is essentially unfunded. We, we just don't have the resources to produce and distribute something like that. But uh, again, it's not a bad idea. If this is something that constituents are wanting, not just one or two, but you know, if there's a real hue and cry for it, um, I wouldn't necessarily be against it, but um, I do wonder about our capacity and bad and bandwidth uh, for such a project. But uh, that's just the chair. I, I'd uh, also be interested in hearing what other commissioners felt about this. This is Commissioner McRoy, and I, I think I agree with the chair that. Uh, you know, <clears throat> we have to look at capacity. And if we're asking for reports from other agencies, we're at the mercy of where they prioritize our requests as well. So. Thank you, Commissioner McRoy. This is the chair. Uh, any other comments? Hey, other this is Mayor Penn. Um, have they done this previously before? And how was how was it just um, just distributed before? I can only uh, this is the chair, uh, Commissioner Penn. I can only remember one other time, and it was um, when uh, Dr. Mildred Ed Edwards was running the commission, and I think because she had uh, an MPH, uh, she had done some research on her own. And uh, I attended one of the meetings that they had in Wichita, and she was passing out that information. Uh, in that case, if you came to the meeting, you got a copy of it. Um, I do not think that that was ever posted on the website, but that's the only time that I would remember. Um, I'm wondering if uh, Stacy or Dr. New uh, are aware of any other uh, times where the commission is has issued such a report. Thank you for the question. Yes, sir. Also, uh, I also have another question. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to uh, concur with what Commissioner Penn said. Um, Dr. Okay. Edwards' report was the last one. Okay. Because I saw, I saw something Turn online. Avenue. I saw something. I thought I saw, it was, you said it was Mildred Edwards. Is that, is that her name? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I saw her report online because I was curious when I joined CAC because I, re I really didn't have a lot of research outside of that. I saw hers and I think I saw the former executive director as well, Kenya Cox. She had something as well where it was just an annual report that she just, how was that distributed? I, I think it was to the CAC members in person at one of the quarterly meetings, is that right? So I this is executive director now. Um, the Edwards report, gosh, I would, I, I don't, I, I wasn't where that was online someplace. I can think of um, the state of Black Kansas. I know CAC worked in coordination with the Community Voice, and that was literally printed in the Community Voice. That was one. That was one op option. And then there was another. It's a report. It's it's seen if I would, if I've been thinking, I would, I could pull it in front. Right here, 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 here is. The only other thing I've seen was this. It's literally first quarter news brief. And this was done in 2017. Um, this thing is approximately 30 pages in length, full color, nice, heavy weighted paper. Literally, my first question is who paid for this? I we I don't have the money to pay for this. Um, so that these are the questions though that I think that there has not been any standard mode of doing this. There has not been any regular cadence of doing this. There has not been any, there has not been anything because we are not statutorily nor is it in our bylaws that we should, right? So one of the questions is, if and if, and if the answer is we don't wanna change anything, that's fantastic. And that, and that there would be no um, expectation requirement. There'd be no need to feel the urgency to, do anything about reporting. All I know is that oftentimes that is something that is that is a, a question that is raised concerning the commission. 
And quite frankly, when I was thinking this notion of, of reporting, it's not what are other agencies doing? It's like, what is this commission doing? Right. So it would be an issue of, you know, at one point we had talked about, and I know there has been a, there was even a form that the commissioners themselves would say by quarterly, this is what we've been doing in the community. This is what we've been involved with as the commission. So it's not what are other agencies doing, but really what has the commission been doing? And then the executive director could compile all that and every year it would be, then it would really truly be not what the Department of Administration is doing, not what the Department of Corrections is doing, but what is the commission doing? I think that would be, uh, when I think of something that would be a report about what the commission is doing, that, that would be what I'm thinking. Uh, rather than, yes, rather than, because again, we're, we're in, we're in uncharted territories, or I would like to put us in uncharted territory. I would like to force us away from what did Mildred do? What did, what did Kenya do? What did Dempsey Swopes do? What did fill in the blank do? But what, what do we think this commission should do? Well, this is the chair again. <clears throat> I'll say that again, that it's it's not a bad idea to do it. But to do it to demonstrate that we've been busy or that we've been doing something, I don't think is um the right prompt. Um I would view a report like that as a tool that maybe some Kansans would be able to use as a means to an end. Um, but if we haven't figured out the end, uh, I'm not necessarily sure that we should devote the time and effort to produce a report, uh, again, without uh, a lot of requests for it. I haven't heard a lot of requests. I've heard a few, but not a lot. Okay. And even with those, it was not clear why they wanted that information. So. I think I'm I would fine. want to say uh, I'd like to leave things the way they are and not create another mandate. Okay. But again, I'd like to hear from other commissioners. Hey, this is Commissioner Penn again. I think it's wise to include that in the bylaws, so at least there's a requirement on the part of the executive director and also the commissioners to show their progress in the community. Right now, we don't have anything. Um, like I said, I had to do a little bit of research myself and go online to see the past few directors. They had some kind of annual report. For instance, I can't even get the budget. I have no idea what that is, nor does any other CAC members. So we need something to at least show our constituents that we're doing something, because the last meeting I attended, it wasn't nice. <laughs> it wasn't nice. When I went to community and they had a lot of backlash for CAC because there's nothing in writing. There's nothing really to show what we're doing, any progress that we're making. So I think it would be wise to do something. This is Commissioner Westbrook. I, I would suggest that we do a one or two page update annually, uh, just specifying the actions or the activity of the commission and the executive director throughout the state. Um, it seems as if a criticism of the commission over the last several years has been our lack of activity or lack of transparency or lack of engagement, what have you. And so I think just something that a, a one or two page, it doesn't have to go into great depth or detail, uh, but something that can be posted online in a PDF form, accessible through the website, through our social media uh, mediums would be wise uh, to address the concerns of our constituents across the state and also showing that we are truthfully engaged in, um, or, yeah, engaged with our members throughout the state. So nothing, again, in too in-depth, too in detail, but just saying that, hey, like, this is what our director has been highlighting any legislative updates that affect, that affects the African-American community, um, any highlights of the commissioners, just just again, something showing that we are doing more than just nothing.
Mr. Chair, um, Executive Director Nell, are you expecting a, a vote on this? I'm not sure. I mean, because I'm not sure. This is Director Nell. I think we need, we would need to figure out what the wording would be. Right? Because this, this is something that is not, again, this is not covered in the statute and it's not covered in the bylaws. There is no wording surrounding this. It's all been everyone's different definition of what they think a good idea is. That's why there's been such contention and consternation. So I think it's a good idea to figure out what does what what wording would need to 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 surround this. Um and I know I've said this before and I don't mind saying it again, it's the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, not the Kansas African American Affairs Executive Director. So I would I the I, and again, I think we are very hung up on the executive directorship of this commission where I think there needs to be, I would love to see more. Because when I read the bylaws, y'all, the executive director isn't even mentioned. It's, it's mentioned once. Like somehow this is this has gotten, uh, there's lots of focus on the direct executive director, but I, I would I would like to shift the, shift it back to where it's supposed to be. It's 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 a commission, right? And so that's why rather than rather than saying, well, what we're going to do is that it's the executive director's job to contact the Department of Administration and the Department of Corrections and gather all this information and do research and then put it into an annual report. That's uh, that that's not the commission. Like I I I I can see the importance of I see that's why I'm even putting it forth. This idea, okay, well what are what are commissioners doing? What are what's the what is the commission doing out in in your various commissions? I don't live in in Salina. I don't live in Topeka. So anything that the executive director does is not necessarily reflective of the community where the commission is actually functioning. This is the chair. Um, I think what would be more valuable than a cut and paste report, you know, where we'd be receiving information from other agencies and then compiling them would be, um, you know, a monthly report from each commissioner about what they've been doing. Um, and that would speak to your concerns about um, whenever we're facing the public, um, commissioners uh, being able to talk about what they had been doing in the last 30 days, as opposed to what the executive director has been doing for the last 30 days. Or quarterly or whatever. That's what I mean. Like there's nothing, we're in uncharted territory. Yeah, whatever. and I think that's something that each commissioner can do with their own constituents. Because the information that we would put in a report is readily available to any Kansan. All you'd need to do is just go to their website. Go to the state website and then go to that particular uh, page. But what doesn't exist there is what each commissioner is doing every 30 day period and annually. And a compilation of that would be good for each commissioner's constituency. So it'd be a report that a commissioner would do and present to their uh, constituents. I think that would be of much more value. This is Commissioner Westbrook. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm. I'm ask for clarification here so are you so are we moving from now the topic of an annual report to now a monthly report from each commissioner that is compiled to the executive director to then present for an annual report uh, this is the chair um I, I was merely making a suggestion i thought that a cut and paste report wouldn't have a lot of value uh again because that information is available uh to anybody who you know wants to you know do the few keystrokes what is not available is what each commissioner is doing uh, month by month. And if we presented uh, a report every meeting, those could be compiled at the end of the year and delivered to constituents. It was a, it was a suggestion. Well, this is Commissioner Westberg. I, I think I understand now. Uh, I, I think my, my understanding was that for, for an annual report uh, in regards to activity, um, I'm not looking to highlight our executive director necessarily however uh whoever that person may be tends to carry the 
carry the, the I don't want to call it a burden, but the, the responsibility and weight of the commission. And so if, if it can be ordered somewhere where the commissioners highlight maybe quarterly several activities that they've done, and those things can be highlighted in an annual report. Again, nothing that is extensive or in-depth, but just a highlight from each particular district. Uh, with, you know, three or four things each commissioner has done. Um, that that then be turned into the executive director and he or, and, and he or she pick three or four things from each commissioner and each district that's been done in regards to his or her activities throughout the state as well, I think could be simply put into a one or two page document that can be put online that anyone can access. And it's, it's not a, uh, you know, that the 30 page document that our previous director had put out there. It's a very, again, a very, very simple document that's not labor intensive and can, again, show our activity throughout the state. Yeah, this is Director Nell. I think I think that's I think that would be good. I when we go back to um where did it go? When we go back to what the statute says. So this is the oh, this is the thing that is in stone. The statute. Well, I guess I can go back to the clean draft. Let's see. Duties and responsibilities. And you see the statute. Is that what's being shown right now is the statute? Oops. Yeah, it's small, but. So when we talk about what is supposed to be happening, these this is this is what we cannot change. The functions and powers and duties of the commission. So these are some of the things that that the commission is are supposed to be involved with now and and when we began this I, I checked with with legal this notion of shall versus will right so this idea of you don't necessarily have to be doing all of these things every year but there are a lot of things that the commission is supposed to be involved in to show that the commission is actually doing things um and I, 30 days seems like a pretty fast cadence. A quarterly seems completely reasonable in terms of some sort of, I think when I think about a commission that functioned well, it would be the CREJ commission, right? And I know Dr. Lewis was on that. And I know Mark, you were on that. And I also know that commission was very active for only a very short time, period of time, right? So they were very clear into what they had to do and they had a short time to do it. But then they did they did a lot of things and had a lot of meetings and did a whole bunch of stuff and produced reports that were long and, and arduous. But so I don't think we have to do that. But this idea that it wasn't it wasn't Tiffany Anderson and Shannon Padilla who were doing the work. It was the commissioners who were doing the work. Everyone was doing work. Do you see what I'm saying? It wasn't just. Yeah, but this is the fun. chair, but uh, our our chair people did drive the discussions. That's fine. And it was clear early on that the point of the commission was to produce reports. Right. So that's and, again, which is why we're even having this conversation, because nothing in nothing in any of our guiding documents say anything about reporting. There's no onus on anyone. There's no onus on the executive director or any of the commissioners nurse to justify their existence. Now, it, currently in the current state we are, everyone seems to think that the only person who needs to justify their existence is the executive director. However, I find that one overlooking the fact that this is a commission. <laughs> and again, for the sake of, let's face it, y'all, within five, within five years, none of us are going to be involved potentially. So for that, for this commission five years from now, what do we want this to look like? So that, you know, when the, when, when everything gets changed and that person goes to read our governing documents, can they figure out what they should do? Can the commission five years now, can whoever's the next commissioner out of, you know, if, if Trent decides to move to Washington, D.C., 
and someone else gets appointed, can that person read the governing documents and figure out what they should do? So if you want to put it in the governing documents, hey, this is it's the executive director show. They do whatever they want and we just nod. Then fine, let's write that. But I don't know if that's really what we want. Like, I don't know if that's what, I don't know if that long-term is the best way to move. Uh, this is the chair again, but I, you know, I'd, I'd say again, that the idea is to demonstrate what the commission is doing. I think each individual commissioner ought to be compiling uh, a list of what they do between meetings uh, and then submitting it to the rest of the commission. Um, I would not, I would hesitate to make any kind of final decision today, however. Oh, I agree. Because we're missing Trent, um, we're missing uh, Anthony, um, and I would like, uh, I would like to hear their thoughts uh, about that. But, you know, to your point, Executive Director, now, um, if the idea is to uh, shift a lot of the responsibility from the chair of the executive director uh, to all of the commissioners, it would seem to me that the commissioners would have to be submitting, you know, pretty regular reports that are combined by years in so that you could go back to your constituents and say, this is what I've done. Uh, when you called, this is what I did. You know, I responded with a call or I responded with a letter. Or I responded with an email. Or I responded with a letter to the editor or I responded with an op-ed or I responded in some way. Uh, I think that would be uh, the best way. But again, I would like to discuss this with the full commission. I agree. And to Commissioner Westbrook's point, it doesn't have to be a, a, a 10 page research paper. Yeah. Yeah. You, it can simply be that you attended an event and met these people, and the event was about thus and so. Um, but if this uh, particular topic has run out of momentum, I would recommend that we move forward before we hit okay. a time boundary. Um, so I would, this is Director Nell, I would suggest. I will try and figure out how I'm going to put this in the minutes that, that that we had this discussion. I would I would like for those of you who are in attendance today to give thought as to what the, that wording might be, right? Um, and uh, I will make sure that these minutes get sent to Commissioner Lewis and Commissioner Davis. Or yeah, uh, but what would that wording need to be? And we are in new territory, so right. This is going to remember we talked about my analogies. It's, it's getting braces. It's going to mm -hmm. it may take a while to figure out what it needs to be, but I think this is something that is good. It is, I, I believe the reporting is, is it's, it's, it's a reasonable request. I have always thought it was a reasonable request. It was just never, I was never implored to do so because none of the governing documents say that we should. I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, for the sake of actually maybe getting, we only have like 20 minutes left. We could, oh, let me. Too many screens. I'm trying to think where we were. With the bylaws. We were discussing meetings, this idea that we will meet four times a year, notice will be given. The clean draft. That's where we left off. We left off with meetings, Article Six meetings that CAC will meet four times a year. Notice will be provided. Um, there's no common duty to provide notice unless it's actually been requested. Although it's going to be on public square because posted at public square. Each meeting shall have the opportunity for public comment, and commissioners shall designate regular meeting dates and publish for each year in advance. So that's where we were. We'd sort of Okay. 
the way the bylaws currently are written in the meetings portion, there is a section on voting. Did everyone get the bylaws? I, I, I know I emailed the bylaws the way they are currently written. I know I did that. <laughs> so maybe it'd be easier if you guys all look at the bylaws that I emailed you. The old, it's a PDF. It's an old, down in the corner, it should say revised in 2011. Rather than me trying to flip my screens and do those things, if you, if you have those uh, available to you, that would be a little more helpful. So in that old draft, it's Article 8 is what we've sort of been working through. And we were sort of down to the voting. Do you see voting under Article 8? CAC acts through recorded votes of commissioners at duly called meetings unless otherwise specified in these bylaws. Motions are passed by a simple majority of those present and voting. Absent commissioners may submit written statements to be read at the meeting. However, they may not be represented by an agent and no proxy voting is allowed. That's currently in the bylaws. Do we want to keep it, change it? I don't know. Get rid of it. Leave it. Others, the chair. Any thoughts on that from the commissioners? Don't everyone speak at once. Oh, this is the chair. Stacy, would you mind reading it out loud? Mm -hmm. I will read it out loud and I will, let's see. I will put it, you know what? I'll put it in the chat. Everyone. Voting. CAC, it's in the chat. CAC acts through recorded votes of commissioners at duly called meetings. Otherwise, unless otherwise specified in these bylaws, motions are passed by a simple majority of those present and voting. Absent commissioners may submit written statements to be read at meetings. However, they may not be represented by an agent and no proxy voting is allowed. This is Commissioner McCroy. Um, it doesn't seem as though this has been an issue for us in the past. Proxy voting and things of that nature. Well, this is the chair. Um, I think Commissioner McRoy is right. But I have served on boards where um, board members could vote via proxy for someone else. Uh, a, a board member could appear at the meeting and say, uh, before the meeting, I spoke with board member so-and-so, and they entrusted me with their proxy vote. Um, I like the no proxy voting uh, because it promotes actual attendance at the meetings. Um, that would just be my two cents. But again, I'd, I'd like to hear from other commissioners. but not all at once. This is Commissioner McRoy. So Mr. Chair, you're saying that you are a proponent of having proxies? Uh, no, I was I was sharing that I had served on boards and, and my board at uh, the museum. Uh, I had board members who would uh, talk to other board members and say, hey, I'm not gonna be able to make it. Here's my proxy vote. Would you vote for me in this way when this issue surfaces? Um, I was arguing, though, against proxy voting because what we want to promote is actual attendance at the meetings. And what I'm afraid might happen is that um, people might start offloading their proxy votes and not coming to the meetings. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And so I, I'm thinking that if this is not broken, there's nothing to fix. If this works for us, we should just continue. Uh, this is the chair, uh, agreed. Um, okay. any, other, any other thoughts on this? 
I'd love to hear. This is Commissioner New. I agree as well. I know there have been at least one meeting where I've been driving like I am today and have said I'm in agreement with um, whatever the majority decides. But as policy, I think that people should be present to represent their own vote. Commissioner Penn? Yes, that, that definitely makes sense. I agree. Okay, so this director now. So what I'm sensing is that this we're we're gonna leave this section alone, not make any changes. This is the chair. That would be my preference. Um is this something that we would need to to vote on or could we simply move to the next topic? I think for for just for let's vote on it. <laughs> that way I can record that we voted to leave the section alone. Okay. Uh, no problem. I will accept a motion uh to leaving uh this particular uh part of our bylaws uh untouched. Okay, this is Commissioner McRoy. I I'll move for that motion. It's been moved. Uh do we have a second? I'll second it, Commissioner Penn. Commissioner Penn, thank you. Uh it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Great. Please signify uh, your vote by saying aye or signifying with a hand sign. Aye. Favor? Aye. We have lost Dr. New. But we still have four who said yes. So we're still. Well, she did say that she would support. Oh, yeah. Well, what, what the majority wanted. So uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next section, let's just do that again. I will drop this in the chat. Well, this is the chair, is it just me or? You know, what you put in the chat, I just got a bunch of um, symbols. Oh, did it not come across as words? I just, it's just like a bunch of symbols. Does anyone else see symbols or is it words? Not hieroglyphics. Seriously? That it is... could just be me. Does anyone else can it, can it, can anyone else check the chat and see if they're seeing words or if they're seeing symbols? I mean, I have it in my email, but what you put in the chat, oh, I can't. I see read. it. I see words. Oh, you wow. see words, Commissioner Penn? Can it? Okay. Must just be me. Okay, and then I just put removal of commissioners in the in the chat. That's the next section. Removal of commissioners. Commissioners may recommend the removal of commissioner due to violation of board responsibilities, which are in section 5.7 by I a really quorum. Thought we had covered this. You know what? And in, in my notes, I say removal is addressed in several places. Can they be streamlined? <laughs> right. So it's possible that we just we we would vote to strike this section because it's been covered someplace else. Forgive me, Mr. Chair, Executive uh, Director Nell, where are we? Uh, uh, Article 8, uh -huh. meetings. It's under like 8.1. It's right below the voting. Voting. Okay. Removal. Yes. Yeah, I really thought we had we covered this before. We have, so we okay. could. I mean, I think the difference would be what we've covered before is resignation, not this notion of removal. You're right. This is the chair. Um, as we did in the previous, um, with that previous section, I would like to leave this as is. But I'd welcome any discussion. I should continue. Uh, Due process, including written notice and an opportunity to, opportunity shall be to be heard. Let me start over again. Due process, including written notice and an opportunity to be heard, shall be observed following departmental and state commission procedures. The final decision of removal must be approved by either the governor's office or the appointing agent. Not everyone on this commission is appointed by the governor's office, so even if 
a person is deemed to be removed, it would it there is veto power by wh whoever the appointing um, person. Um, this is the chair. I would I would recommend if we're going to alter this at all that we add one word. Um, it's in that second sentence that begins with due process, including, and I'd add the word after including advance written notice. Just for clarity, but I, that's the only change that I see there. But again, uh, I'd love to hear what other commissioners feel about uh, that or, or that addition. I guess written notice uh, indicates advance notice. I just wanted to be uh, clear. Uh, you don't want to get written notice right before the meeting necessarily. So <laughs> kind of like me mail, yeah. emailing out the clean. Then you might want to. I mean, that's one of those things you might say ten days advance written notice. That might be something that you would. Right, two yeah. days, forty eight hours, whatever. Again, whatever it is you want to put. Anyone? I'd love. To, this has got to be a group. It's got to be more than just McCormick. Come on. I'd love to hear whatever everyone else's thoughts. This is the chair. I did. I did mention advanced written notice. Um, is that specific enough, or is it worth uh, the alteration? I guess notice does also indicate advance. So. This. This Commissioner McRoy, I agree. And I think that this one should just stay as is. I thought I saw Commissioner Penn come off mute and I made uh, the corner of my eye, I might've missed that. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I took myself off of mute. This is Commissioner Penn. I'm just confused. What are we trying to alter here? Just just notifying the commission that we're not able to attend a meeting and just come mm -hmm. in, no? No, we're talking about removal. This idea that if 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 the group oh, at some yeah. point wants to remove somebody, we had discussed resignation earlier. But this is this seems that this is more of the if it's an offensive maneuver. This and the the what is in the chat currently is how it stands. The discussion point right now is whether or not we include the word due process, including advance written notice. So for example, what it's not written notice that happens the way I like, for example, the way I emailed out the clean copy of the, it's like, oh, two hours ahead. I'm like, oh crap, I probably should email out the clean copy of the of the uh, of the bylaws. So it's not that two two hours before a meeting, someone gets this written advance notice that that there's gonna be a vote to oust them. That seems a little short of notice. So this idea that Commissioner McCormick was suggesting that we need to stipulate that there's some sort of advanced written notice so not like someone's getting served papers as they're sitting in you know well we've given you written notice five minutes ago and so then that i'm like well that's actually a good question like for example i need i emailed out the clean copy of the of the of the two hours ago which is not a long time so this question the question on the table is one do we need to use the word advanced because that's the only change that's being discussed right now or and if we say advanced should we stipulate a week advance, 10 days in advance, whatever, whatever an advance notice or not change it at all. What's currently in the chat is what's currently written. It does not include the word advance. It just says written notice. So that's the discussion right now. This Commissioner McRoy, I interpret notice to be advanced. Right. Do we want to stipulate anything about how much notice? Is there any kind of industry, I don't know, industry standard? Is there any kind of best practice? If you if someone says notice, does that imply two week, two weeks? If we're talking about due process, like if, you know, we could, you know, is two is two hours enough time to pull together due process? This is the chair. Um, it's it should also bear mentioning what uh, Commissioner McRoy just said that feels like the language there holds up. And that um, he didn't feel like we needed to alter it. 
Okay. Uh, I kind of I feel the same way, but um, again, I'm interested in what other commissioners. If other commissioners don't feel strongly about this, we could move on. We are approaching a uh, a time boundary. So hearing no objections, I'm guessing that this is okay to leave as it is, commissioners. I'm interested in what Commissioner Westbrook and Commissioner Penn think about the wording. Okay. Um, let's move on to your announcement. Sorry, I was having issues giving up mute. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with the way I'm, it's I'm sorry, there. Go, go ahead, sir. Yes, Commissioner Westbrook, I was having issues coming off of mute, but yes, I would say leave it as it is. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. I as uh, well. The director now. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that you, Commissioner Penn? Yes, sir. Commissioner Penn, I as well. Pardon okay. me. Thank you. So if you can do a vote on that, just so I can indicate that we're voting to not change that. We have to vote this that it's going to stay. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to leave this particular section as is. Do I have a motion from the floor? It's Commissioner Westbrook, so move. It's been moved. Do we have a second? I'll second it, Commissioner. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Penn. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Uh, Commissioner McRoy? No, I was just raising my hand for the vote. Oh, anticipation of the vote. All right. Eager vote. Uh, please signify uh, support of this motion by saying aye or raising your hand. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Executive Director Nell, uh, your announcements, please. Yeah, I think that's good. We, we, I will... Um... Effectively, what we what we have voted on is to, to not change two things, which is fine. So I'll get it all put into the new clean draft and I will email out because like like, for example, it says 10 days ahead of time, you should email out the proposed bylaw changes so that like that's clear to me. OK, uh, there are a couple of announcements. One is that on this is the first observance of Juneteenth as a state holiday. Obviously, people have been celebrating and observing Juneteenth for a lot longer, but this is the first time since it's been a state holiday in the state of Kansas. So there is going to be a Juneteenth, uh, like a, a governor's office Juneteenth event going on. And I'll type this all in the chat Monday, June 17th. It will begin at 11 a.m. And it's in the state house on the first floor rotunda. Oh, this is the chair um, who's the keynote? Uh, Dr. Lewis, our, our own Dr. Our Lewis. Own. Be our own Dr. Meeting. Lewis. The governor will be there in attendance to read the proclamation, the Juneteenth proclamation. Um, as with all things CAC related, if it is not convenient for you to get there, it is not in, it is not in any way mandatory to make this trip. I, I always try to involve people who are closest, for whom it's the least amount of time and gas to get any place. So Dr. New, uh, being in Topeka, will actually sing the national, the Black National Anthem. Dr. Lewis is giving the keynote, um, the governor the proclamation. Uh, so everyone is welcome. It's free, open to the public. I'm spreading the word on socials. I've put it in the CAC email. I'm, I have emailed specific people who I know are doing Juneteenth work. I know people in Junction City, Topeka, Johnson County, Wichita, uh, who I'm emailing specifically saying, hey, this is happening. Hey, this is happening. Hey, this is happening. So it's going to be very along the, very much along the idea, the same lines as the, the Martin Luther King event that happens in January. But we're not marching. We're not going outside. So yes, it's um, it's in it's in the chat Monday, June seventeenth, eleven a.m. It's in the Capitol on the first floor in the first floor rotunda. Monday, June seventeenth, eleven a.m. at the Capitol. That's 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 the main one because that's the thing that's coming up, and um, it's one it's one that I chose to it, it's it's Kansas African American Affairs Commission is doing this only because there are so many organizations that do Juneteenth work. Uh, years before this, I have never as the as the commission as as us done any Juneteenth organization because there are so many. I first I wouldn't even know when we would put it. 
without exaggeration, there are two weeks worth of Juneteenth events going on all over the, the state. So I just sort of squeezed this in and um, to do this, at least definitely this first year, since it's the first year that it's officially a state holiday. Uh, this is the chair. And what about the um, the brunches? The brunches are happening and I will, they, they're in the agenda. The first one's coming up here in June 29th. It's going to be in Lawrence. Those are the ones that, that we are doing sort of in conjunction with Kansas Black Leadership Council, mainly because they have money. We don't <laughs> to, to host these things. Um, so uh, yeah, no money is coming out of uh, CAC's budget for either one of these two events. These are not things that are going to cost CAC anything. Good deal. Oh, this is the chair. Any any uh, questions or comments? If not, I'll accept a motion uh, for adjournment. It's Commissioner Westbrook, so move. It's been moved. We have a second. Commissioner McRoy seconds. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. Opposed? Um, any aye. opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Take care now.